Hi. Please excuse my voice. It sounds terrible. All right. So we're going to hopefully go through this quickly so that you don't have to listen to this for very long. It's awful. All right. So we are talking about deconstructing writing prompts today. So you know on the map test they have those really big writing things. And we haven't really done a ton of that this year. But I do know that you guys know basically how to write. I think that the most challenging thing is actually like figuring out what the heck they want from you, okay? Oftentimes, even I, I give you like a writing prompt when we were doing our last unit and you would be like, wait, what? I don't even understand what you're asking. So today we're focusing on deconstructing that and figuring out what each prompt actually wants and then being able to break it down and put it in our own words, okay? So first, there are four different types of writing that we are often asked to do. Sorry, we're up here. A lot of times they like to use this language to make sure that you are aware of it. So if you see it, I want you to know. So a narrative is where you are describing a story. Now I feel self-conscious about my typing because everybody said I typed too hard. Or event that is made up. So if they ask you to write a narrative, if anybody ever asks you to write a narrative, if somebody's like, I'm going to teach you how to write a narrative, it's making up your own story, it's creative writing, it's developing your own short story, coming up with a plot, a conflict, all that stuff, okay? Argument writing, as I feel like maybe we would know, is used to, I don't want it in bold, who oh, no. Is used to influence readers to agree with the author's opinion, okay? So another word for the argument writing is persuasive writing, okay? This is where you're trying to get somebody to agree with you. Informational. It just provides facts. Oh, it's been my day. About a real world topic or task. So that could be like, here, read this story about a river and then write a three paragraph essay about this river. Something like that. It is real. It's a thing that's actually going on. I and then our last one, which we really have not done a ton of, but which you're going to need to do a ton of, is a literary response. So it's responding to reading, but it is actually describing how, oh my gosh, it's 5.30 a.m., guys, I can't do it, describing how the writer of whatever you're reading, not yourself, but how the writer of whatever you're reading uses a certain device. To affect his or her audience. Okay? So it's being like, oh, how does this author use symbolism? How does the conflict in this story push the plot in this way? Something like that. It's very, very similar to the standard that we've just been working on most recently. Okay? So every time that we come across a prompt, we have two big questions that we would like to ask ourselves to help us actually figure out what it wants. So first, what is the purpose, especially with a literary response? So what is, a, what is our purpose in writing an essay in response to this item? And then our last question is, what would the audience of your essay be looking for? Okay, especially when you do a literary response one, the audience is like, it, there's no point in us sitting there being like, oh, who is the audience? Because really, like, the audience is going to be like me, or another teacher, or the people who score this thing, okay? It's not like, oh, I'm writing this letter to the principal, and it needs to be in this way. Like, it's a very clear audience. So, we have never read this story before, and we do not have to, because that is not the purpose of what we are doing. This is a prompt that has been used on, like, a test in a different state or something. So we are going to break it down together and then describe what it actually wants. So we're bringing the board back. So it says, in the story, Sang and her mother discuss hibiscus plants. What does the hibiscus plant represent to Sang? What does it represent to Sang's mother? And what thoughts and feelings do Sang and her mother have about the hibiscus plant in the story? 
Use details from the story to support your response. So this is asking us to do multiple things. And in order for us to break it down, I gave you this little graphic organizer thing here. Okay. So this is on your paper. There's two of them on the back and one is on the front. It's just how it printed out. And I have it on this board. I'm sorry. Okay. So I have it on this board. <laughs> Which everybody hated how I held last time. Too bad. <laughs> okay, so in our first big round thing, we're going to break it down based on what three questions it is asking us. So this prop is telling us it wants us to do three things. So we have those in our big circles. What does it represent to say? What does it represent to her mom? And then our last one is what is their, what are their thoughts and feelings about this plant? Okay, and again, we have not we have not actually read this story, so we don't actually know the answers, but we're just trying to break it down to figure out what we need to do. So we have those three main topics. What does it represent to say? What does it represent to her mom? And then what are her thoughts and feelings about the plant? And so with each one of those, we need to explain. There it is. <laughs> we need to explain it, whatever it is. And then we need to make sure that we provide a text detail, okay? We cannot give this without the text detail. So that second question that's like, what is our audience going to be looking for? They're going to be looking for an explanation supported by a text detail. And we talked like two days ago, yesterday, yesterday, about inferring and citing evidence, okay? So this is that evidence. You are explaining the representation or symbolism. So overall, the first thing that we could really say is like, this prompt wants me to write about symbolism. It wants me to write about what it means to her, what it means to her, and their overall thoughts and feelings, and then support my ideas with actual stuff from the text, okay? So this is just a quick way for us to break it down. We're going back to the paper. On the bottom, you will see now, in your own words, explain what you're supposed to do in order to correctly respond to this prompt. Okay. So your task today, task two, is going to ask you to do this. It's going to say, it's going to just give you a prompt and say, what is this actually asking you to do? If you want to break it down in some sort of graphic organizer, you totally can. If you could look at it and be like, all right, I got this right off the bat, that's fine. But this is the kind of response I'm looking for because I really want you to make it like as simple as possible. Even if you look at it and you know immediately, like, I want you to break it down like you are talking to a toddler who barely knows how to read or whatever. Okay? You want it to be as easy as possible. So this specific prompt would say, so I need to look at symbolism, right? I need to figure out how this plant is important to that girl named Sang. I need to figure out how it's important to her mom. I need to identify their thoughts and feelings, and I need to support each of these with actual evidence that I have cited from the text. Okay. I must support my answers. All right, so go to task one, get it done, and then move on to chapters five and six. Okay, bye.